Welcome to Innovations in Leadership, a Success League radio production. This is a podcast focused on customer success and the leaders who are designing and implementing best practices in our field. This podcast is brought to you by the Success League, a consulting and training firm focused on developing customer success programs that drive revenue. My name is Kristen Heyer, and I'm the host of Innovations in Leadership and the founder and CEO of the Success League. Pearl Bandari is the Director of Customer Success for Acclaimant, and we're going to be talking about some of the ways that customer success as a field needs to grow up. And I guess that's really just kind of a silly way of saying that it's time for our discipline to mature in a few ways. So, Pearl, I'm excited to discuss this topic with you, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Kristen, for having me. I'm really excited. So before we dive in, can you share with the audience how you landed in the field of customer success? Yes, I'm going to do it in the shortest format as possible, but I started <laughs> my a windy career. path, right? <laughs> indeed, indeed. I started my career as an occupational ergonomist and I worked at a consulting firm for many years. I dabbled a little bit in HR for a while, but I came back to ergonomics and the company I'd worked for turned into a SaaS startup. So we went from a 40-year-old consulting firm to a SaaS startup. And all of a sudden, we needed customer success. And we had not developed the department. My first customer success team was grown from the ground up. So I was CSM number one, manager number one. We built every playbook kind of day by day. And as we hired our team, we grew from a team of you know myself one to about a team of eight but by the time we got acquired. And then since then, I've just worked at a couple of different companies. One, our acquisition, the company that has acquired us, and now a claimant and my kind of sweet spot or my happy place is working with startups and helping to either grow teams or reorg teams at critical points of their journey. That's exciting. Tell me a little bit about how your current customer success team is set up. Yeah, absolutely. So my current team is customer success, support, and services, all, all post-implementation. Yeah. We started as success and support actually, and kind of needed to separate those functions out. Our success managers were doing everything and it's very difficult to be proactive and reactive. Yeah, as many of us know. So we took support out, put it in its pillar of its own, gave it tooling and, and the recognition that it needed. And then we also allowed our CSM team to become much more proactive and really focus on the long sort of line of sight of that customer's journey. In 2022, we added post-implementation services, which is something that my company offers and a lot of companies offer for customers that are already live but need to maybe make significant changes in the system or, or have some sort of uh, augmentation done. So we have people that are skilled to do that in our phase of the journey, which is, I think, a great compliment to the team. That's great. Thanks for sharing that. I think it's always interesting for people to hear how other leaders have their teams set up. You know, it gives people ideas about how they might want to do that themselves. You and I chose our topic today because I think many CS teams are being cut or eliminated by this current economic downturn that we're in. Many times, unfortunately, it seems like CS teams are one of the first teams to go because they're seen as expendable. Why do you think that is? And what do you think is happening? Well, first of all, Boo, because we know yeah, we don't boo. want our customer success teams to go, to, especially during this critical year. You know, there's a couple of ideas that I do have, and I actually think the onus is on CS. It's on us. And this is kind of where this topic is close to my heart of CS sort of needing to grow up is we're a pretty divided function, right? If you go and talk to any different leader of any CS team, what we own and our, and our focus, it varies, right? So you can't even really quickly and easily define CS. So I'll attribute part of it is to lack of focus. If you as a CS team or leader can't define CS, how can your leadership define CS and, and the value that you bring? So that was kind of one thought of mine. Um, in addition to that value, I think KPIs, right? I don't know that we've all agreed what are the important KPIs. I think people say NRR is important, right? Or we kind of know that one is important, but then maybe there's other ones, right? That are debatable. Like is NPS worthwhile or not? And when you have those debates, again, you create that uncertainty in the mind of the organization or the broader leadership. When you're supposed to be the expert, I think that uncertainty and lack of focus kind of reduces the value or diminishes the value. And last but not least, I'll be honest is I think a lot of CS teams aren't leveled at the same level as other organizations, right? In a broader company. We'll often see like a C-suite and then, you know, maybe like a vice president of CS or operations at the table. But 
I, I think leveling matters. I think we need to see more CCOs, right? Enter the field. And I yeah. think we have, but that's yeah. going to allow you to talk to the board, right? And say like, hey, this is really important. So yeah. Yeah. I think having that also just, you know, as you're out there and you might be looking for a role, going into a company that has that is going to make you more successful. And so it's something that, you know, for those who are unfortunately out there job hunting right now, that's something that they should be looking for is how far up does CS go inside the organization? That's a great insight. That's a great, a great another podcast, maybe. Too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that would make another good podcast. I uh, like what to, to look for in your next one. So how do you see the relationship between the maturity of a customer success program and the level of responsibility that that team carries inside the organization? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't have huge company experience, okay, on CS. So I'm going to give you that like grain of salt there. but. I think it's like an inverse relationship. When you work in a small company or a startup, you do everything SCS, right? Because there aren't a lot of people to do it. So you get into product marketing, you get into renewal, to get into upsells, you, you kind of dabble in everything. And it's actually a very broad space, right? And there's a ton of value that you apply daily. As you grow larger, usually companies scale and you start to have these functions available, you'll see that diminishing return. And, and to be honest, I saw that happen when we got acquired by a larger organization where I was stripped of maybe some of my tasks, some of them for the better, to be honest, right? Like sometimes you're doing a lot of extra work and you know there's more on your plate, but a lot of times you're not necessarily even consulted anymore. And that I think is where the problems could be. Now, the large, large organizations, I do imagine you have teams and, and you really have to have these teams because your scale is massive, right? So I'm not saying it's the wrong thing, but I don't know that they always stay in customer success. And that's the bit that's interesting, right? Like, so if you think about even product marketing, it's often a marketing function, but is it, right? And, and if you're thinking about who your customer is, maybe it, it should be in a different place. So I don't know, just kind of thinking broadly about that, but I think there are definitely different types of versions as you grow as a company. Yeah, and I, I think the companies that I see that have really matured into their customer success programs have a direct connection between each part of their CS organization and the company's KPIs. So that connection between being really, truly responsible for a company level board visible KPI, I think is part of maturing as a CS program too. What do you think about that? I think you're very right. A mature CS program, you know, is one that is recognized. Like, you know, if you think about how CS maturity happens, you have to be given budget, frankly, to do it. And you have to have enough resource to do it. If you want to grow your team and the organizations that put budget towards it, right, that all kind of trickles back to how does that organization value customer success? I, I'm seeing it more and more like on the website, which I think is the coolest thing, right? It's like one of our values for our customers is customer success. That's great. And that means it's likely ingrained in the culture. But to really be sure, you know, you kind of start to inspect that that CS organization and what are they really given charge of, right? And and I think renewals is a great example, right? Like a lot of sales teams still do renewals because they get the comp benefits, right, for it. They get the renewal, they get the credits. But like a renewal is really part of that customer journey. So to kick a customer over to somebody else just for that little phase, it doesn't always make sense. So I think being given responsibility directly to deliver renewals is in fact an area where like a mature program can shine. You're giving them that. You're saying this KPI is attributed directly to your team. Kind of goes back to that lack of focus. If you don't accept that as your KPI, I think we're diminishing our organization. If we say, I don't want renewals because... It's just not where, where my team's sweet spot is, but then you're losing your seat at the board table, like you said. You are, yeah. If you don't take some KPI on that matters at the board level, whatever it is, you know, it could be expansion revenue, it could be renewals, it could be, you know, owning the customer satisfaction and NPS score. I'm not a huge fan of NPS, but it is something that a lot of investors take a look at. But something that the board cares about needs to be on your plate. And without that, you do become kind of a disposable team. I don't know what you think about this. So you made a comment, not fan of NPS. And I think many people have had 
on and off sentiments in recent times of NPS, but I feel like there's there's something else that we do in CS that is the health score, which I actually think needs to be elevated to the KPIs. If you think about what a health score is, it's the combination of yeah. all the good things that you want to know about your customer all at once. So when the board's yeah. asking you for like, what was your NPS in January? Well, really what you want to know is like, what was my health score ratio? What was my revenue at risk in January? Because that's telling you a painting you a picture of what your team is actually doing and all the value that they provide. And so I would love to see us like bring health score up to the top, you know, and, and learn. I'm going to do a shout out because when I spoke at a recent conference, I learned about, you know, a CS operations team that they actually know with their health score, if one point drops, exactly how much dollar turn they can expect. Like, that's incredible. That's like CS operations at its best, right? And I loved hearing that. So those are the examples I think that we could all really, really benefit from. Yeah, that's actually really exciting to hear. I think, you know, we encourage our clients to definitely surface kind of a snapshot of how the client base is doing at the board level of the health score, because I think that that is important for them to see, but they don't want to see it. We all look at it at like, oh, the granular level of what is each customer doing, but they want to see it kind of globally for the organization, maybe broken out by segment or things like that. But I've seen some really interesting reports that different companies have done kind of to surface that information at the board level. So it's exciting to hear that there's somebody who's automated that a little bit more. That's pretty cool. And tied it to revenue. That's That's been needed for quite a while. So I think that sometimes CS still gets confused with support or professional services or account management. And I know all of those fit under the umbrella of CS as a function in some ways, but I think we haven't always done a very good job of establishing our identity as a function. So what do you see as the right identity and how can CS leaders go about establishing that identity for their program? That is a great question. And I think we all understand there are the proactive and reactive elements. And I think most organizations do understand that already, but you bring up especially the variation between CS and let's say, you know, account management. Like, why can't I just have an account manager? And why do I need a CSM? And I think it goes kind of back to what your real goal is with having this team, right? And that goes back to KPIs. So if you have a an account manager, your goal is likely going to be to expand, right? Or have, you know, some sort of expansion a- activity. While that may be beneficial, that account manager to do their best really has to sell, right? They have to be focused on finding those opportunities, developing them, selling them. So if they're spending all of their time doing that, are they able to spend time nurturing the customer, digging into data. So I feel like part of it is, you know, setting those KPIs, really tight KPIs, like what are the goals of your CS organization, right? So if it's, you know, retention, or if it's a health score target or ratio target or whatever it is that you're going to, you know, push for, really setting those goals. And that I think can help to set the strategy. So I'll be honest, like I have support and success under an organization called customer success. So people often forget about support. So on our scorecard, I'm calling out support satisfaction as a target, as well as my health score ratio, because what does that do? That gives me the combined score that my CSM is kind of managing, but it also calls out where we might have a deficiency in reactive support, where we actually may impact customer experience at that level. So like, that's just an an example. We kind of started this off off with this. Like, I feel like we even just need to start by like settling on, you know, what's a definition of customer success? What are we responsible for? You know, and I, I love that we have models. I love that you can apply your model to fit your business needs. But after a while, that just sounds a little wishy-washy, I think. So I'd love to see us get a little tighter. In your job description, is data you know, analysis on your job description, that should be, is retention on your job description, is owning sort of the customer in a period of their journey on your job description. Like, I think there's a lot of things that we leave and that creates that wishy-washiness of that confusion between, well, who takes the ball now, right? Who goes now? I just have my AMs or my services organization take it over. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that leads me to another question that I had, which was, what are some of the important skills that you think CS teams are missing today? 
So I always am talking about CS as a data-driven function. I think CS's first prior- priority is financial wellness. The way to achieve financial wellness is to understand your data. Most companies now have access to more data than ever before. I remember when I started in customer success, getting usage data was like super tough, but now you have it. But do you know how to mine it? And spending time, even in colleges, I would love to like see us teaching CS skills of how to mine data and how to gather trends. Every customer has a different story to tell, but data is data, right? So if you can learn statistics and things like that, I think you can apply a lot. I would say definitely CSMs being data-driven is is like a key skill set. And, you know, I think in addition to that, if you think about the relationship bit, that is still very important. We have to be able to talk to people and we have to be able to listen. So not only are you just like focus on, you know, the data and and making sure this KPI is met, but you have to be listening. You have to be actively engaging and you have to notice when there are subtle shifts in that customer, such as maybe a leadership change, right? I found in 2022 leadership change, there's a reason for churn that people weren't expecting in the past. Usually you, you invested money in software and it takes a lot of time to implement, but all of a sudden a new leader comes in and they're just like, oh, I don't really like this software. I liked this other one. So are your CSMs noticing nuance, little organizational changes? So are they able to really dig in and listen? I think those are some of the critical skills. And I think not that they're necessarily missing them today, but I think with the relationship side, we're not necessarily focused on the data side. But if you want to win with your organization, you have to be able to deliver data that allows your stakeholder to look really great in their organization. I think selling skills is another one that I see missing a lot. I hate almost calling it selling skills because you're not necessarily always selling something for money, but you're persuading customers to do stuff all the time. That's a huge part of CS, even if there is no selling component to your particular organization. And so I think some level of skill in, you know, how do you present things to a customer in a way that persuades them that this is in their best interest? And then how do you negotiate effectively? How do you manage the whole process of somebody going through a renewal? I think there's a discipline there that sales teams have that CS teams should get. I would 150% agree with you because <laughs> I will say, I mean, in the last two years, I've taken on renewals and minor upsells. And it was the first time that we had a real ownership over like just pure sales in a way. It was easier for our, my team because a lot of times customers are just asking for it and we were able to deliver the need very easily and seamlessly. However, you're right because, you know, when you're doing like your business reviews and you're thinking about what the gap analysis is and where your product could potentially fill a gap that a customer has, you are essentially upselling them at that point. And you need to be able to not only just deliver the idea, but deliver it all the way to the finish line. That is truly done with a sales mindset. And so probably a critical piece, you know? Yeah, well, and it doesn't have to be creepy. I think a lot of CS folks are are kind of nervous about anything that sort of smacks of selling because they think, oh, now I've got to be this creepy, smarmy person that's like trying to get customers to buy stuff they don't really need. And it's like, no, 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 no. You, you're you just being an advisor. And part of being an advisor is advising on things that they do need that cost something and talk about why that would benefit them in the long run. So I think it doesn't have to be creepy. <laughs> so, no, you're right. Can I, can I use a real life example though? Yeah, of yeah. Our world. If you think about social media and how social media influencers actually sell you things every single day and you don't realize that they're selling you, it's based on that relationship that you feel like you've developed. But in the CS team sense, you actually have developed that relationship. It's really just talking about what is beneficial and what's going to help them. And honestly, what can even help is when you say, actually, I don't think this is going to help you. Like the trust Mm -hmm. and the honesty is going to take you far. Right. Yep. Yeah. They'll listen to you. If you say that on something and it's true, the next time you say something like, Hey, you really do need this, they'll trust you more because you're being neutral and you're sharing with them what's in their best interest and you're helping them understand why. I think that's the other piece too. So let's talk about the line of reporting. What do you see as the right reporting line for customer success as a function? And what are some of the pros and cons of other reporting formats that you've seen? 
So I've literally been talking about this in the last few days. My ideal is that you have, like we've talked about, that CCO level, because I think that is the ultimate holy grail, because you're really going to just have a customer focused team. And let's be honest, this is not new because marketing organizations have been doing this. Like CPG organizations have customer focused teams. They've been having them forever. So it's just a different spin. If you have to choose somewhere to put your teams, you know, most of the options are probably between sales and operations today. And I think if you're going to choose between those two, you're probably going to benefit from going towards operations is my opinion. Now, that being said, I think you should have a dotted line to sales. So we actually consult with our sales team on those types of upsells where we need to learn. Maybe we need a little more help with their presentations or we need to like, you know, actually work on the pricing. I actually go right to my CRO for that. And he's been an amazing resource. But our reporting relationship is actually through our operations team in a way, right? So in a weird way, I think if you are fully aligned with the sales organization, my worry is that you lose that focus on what the customer needs and you get to focus on dollars primarily, right? Which is growing the organization. So that's kind of my quick thoughts on that, but I'd love to hear your thoughts too. I kind of think the opposite of you on that, that particular one. I I come from sales originally, so I have a much higher level of comfort with CROs. I think you're right on the, the focus point. Like you might be asked to focus more on revenue than on some of the other things that you can and should focus on. I do think revenue is really important for every CS team. And I think if you're thinking about where are you going to be the most sort of quote unquote safe as a function inside the organization, you are safer under revenue because you're tied to revenue than you are under operations, which is a cost center. Always. And always the emphasis in a cost center is how do you reduce the cost? How do you reduce the cost? How do you reduce the cost? So you're going to struggle a little, I think, if you're in operations, getting resources, getting team members in a way that you wouldn't necessarily if you were in revenue. But I think you're right that the optimal is to have a chief customer officer who's thinking about both sides of things and understands that it's a holistic kind of a role. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that's where my head is at right at the moment is like, how do we kind of keep CS teams going when, you know, there's this massive set of layoffs happening in the tech space. So just to kind of wrap things up, what advice would you give to a leader who feels like their CS team is at risk inside of their organization? Look back to your year and really dig into your data, right? Find all the things create your own business review, right? I think there's like a couple of people that have pushed out, what do they share with their internal teams? Like, I love that. I used to do like a one page by the numbers for my team, you know, really be not only confident in the data and what your team has done, but, but share it out. Because again, it is easy to just say, well, I didn't see a direct number come from X person. So that's a reason to, to not keep them in the organization. But there is something tied to everybody in a CS team, right? So this is tricky, right? Like I think I was talking to somebody about how they were, once they were like, oh, what I'm in CS operations, like I don't have a profit generating role. And, you know, that's where I think it, it comes down to really digging into that data. What did our CS operations team deliver, right? What were the actual metrics? How do you think we got all this customer marketing out? Or how do you think we developed our health score? You know, how do you think we were able to retain the customer's retain? So really trying to tie it back to, I think, real data, because I think that's what sings, right? To your CFO and your CEO. But if you do feel like your team is at risk, you know, which I think kind of unfortunately a lot of teams are, and it's not maybe as the right word. I don't know. This market is tough, right? I think every team in an organization is feeling like a little bit of self-preservation in mind. So I think it's also making sure that, you know, you are hitting your numbers. And if you have honestly, overhired, that's also something to think about, right? Because ratios are important too. I think our team, like for example, I had set a target ratio for the CSMs. In this market, we're actually raising that ratio because A, we've gained efficiencies with CS tools. So we know we can like do more in less time. So we're spending money there, but let's actually like push ourselves so that we can show our organization we're even more valuable. 
I think this is true in good times and bad times. Keep your processes lean so that you are producing more value per person on your team so that you can continue to justify the group and say, hey, you know, here's how we kept things trim last year. Here's what we have on deck for this year. And then you're going to be looked at by your chief financial officer and your CEO as somebody who's a teammate rather than somebody who's just being really protective of their program. Yeah. Okay, last question, and this is the one we ask all of our guests, we can offer it a little here. What is the biggest trend in customer success right now and why? Oh my God, I find this question difficult, but I, I'm gonna say AI, and I'm not gonna say the regular AI, but I think it's the new wave of AI, which is, so AI for data, AI for numbers and, and processing, you know, revenue, I think we've had that a little bit, not that everyone's utilizing it yet, but I feel like the next gen is AI for actual efficiency, right? AI that can generate your renewal email for you and you can just do a quick review, but you never had to write that in the first place because your AI has looked back and seen what you wrote and just was able to replicate, which is a little bit, you know, I'm a little bit nervous about that, honestly, but um, I think that natural language processing is going to keep elevating to actually you know, building some efficiency for us in, in ways that we probably haven't yet imagined. So that was one that kind of piqued my interest so far. I think that's a great one. I see all different kinds of AI companies sort of getting started in our space and they all are taking kind of a slightly different approach from each other. It'll be really interesting when that group of companies kind of consolidates in a few years where we end up with various tools. What I've seen of some of them is like incredible so far, right? So I think it's also about them scaling to meet the needs of like an SMB startup or, a, you know, somebody that's pretty t small where you don't have perhaps money to invest in a lot of tools, but you need that the most, right? So those are going to be, I think, some of the interesting evolutions. I'm really excited by where, where AI can take us. And then obviously there's areas I'm a little bit cautious on until I really see it. Well, Pearl, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your ideas on how CS leaders can help our field mature and also can secure their own programs. If someone wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to reach out? I recommend find me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty okay. active there, so I'm always checking it. All right. Well, thanks again. I also want to thank our producer, Russell Bourne, and our audio expert, Nika Rivers. This podcast is a production of Success League Radio. To learn more about the Success League's consulting and training offerings, please visit our website, thesuccessleague.io. For more great customer success content, follow the Success League on LinkedIn or at TSL Customers on Twitter. You can subscribe to Success League Radio on Apple, Google, Amazon, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. Thanks so much for listening, and we hope you'll join us next time.